you have on the right hand side, you have uh, Enlil. Now, this guy is uh, was given control of Earth, even though his brother Enki was the Earth was named after him. Ah, gather round, dear listener, for today's tale takes us back to the ancient mystic lands of Sumer. Enki, the god of wisdom, creation, and water, is about to make his way from the magnificent temple he built in Eridug to the great city of Nibru, his brother Enlil's domain. And trust me, this isn't a mere trip. It's one that weaves through symbolism, cosmic order, and the very essence of life itself. Before we venture any further, welcome to Temple of Gods. If you have a taste for ancient myths, fascinating stories and divine escapades, go ahead and hit like and make sure to subscribe. You won't want to miss what's coming. So, let's dive in, shall we? Enki had just completed his most impressive task, the construction of the e Engura, a temple dedicated to none other than himself in the grand city of Eridu. This wasn't just a place for a quick prayer or a little light worship. No, this was a divine marvel. The walls gleamed with lapis lazuli and silver, materials as sacred as the sun itself. It wasn't just a temple, it was a symbol, a symbol of balance between the divine and the earth, a sacred meeting point where wisdom flowed freely and life was sustained through the Abzu, the freshwater ocean beneath the earth. You see, Enki's power wasn't just in the creation of the temple, but in the very waters he controlled, the waters that brought life, harmony and order. With the temple complete and his divine work in Eridug sealed in stone and lapis, Enki sets his sights on his next destination, Nibru. Nibru, Enlil's city, Enlil the god of storms, air and kingship, the one who enforces divine law and keeps the balance of justice in check. You can see where this is going, can't you? While Enki reigns over wisdom and the creation of life, Enlil rules over the divine order, the laws that govern everything. The two brothers, though both mighty, govern very different aspects of the divine realm, and this journey of Enki's is not just a visit, it's a demonstration of the delicate cosmic dance between creation and law. As Enki makes his way along the Euphrates River, this isn't just any journey. According to the Enki and the World Order text, the river itself seems to realize who's passing by. The waters swell up as if to say, ah, there he is, the great god of water. Fish, as if following a divine invitation, swim along with him. And the sound of the river? Well, it's described as resembling the mooing of cattle, a deep, resonating hum like the river's own way of giving a hearty cheer for the god's passing. In the Sumerian worldview, water wasn't just something you splash about in. It was sacred, life-giving. And Enki, he's the god who holds the reins of all that. So as he makes his way down the river, it's not just a walk through the countryside. It's a reminder of his divine control over water, creation, and all that flows between them. This journey isn't just physical. It's a manifestation of Enki's power over the very essence of life itself. When Enki finally reaches Nibru, his arrival is marked by more than just his presence. No, this is a divine affair. The gods gather for a feast, a grand banquet to honor Enki and the monumental work he has done in Eridug. The offerings come flowing in, beer, wine, food, all for the gods to enjoy together. It's a celebration of divine camaraderie, a reminder that, while Enki and Enlil may have their differences, they share a mutual respect. Enki's work in Eridug was more than just an act of creation. It was a divine act of balance. And this feast, it's a way for the gods to acknowledge that balance, to toast to the cosmic order that they together uphold. But here's where things get a little tense. Enki and Enlil may share respect for one another, but their roles and views of the universe couldn't be more different. You see, Enki thrives in creation, bringing life, wisdom and harmony to the world. Enlil, however, governs divine law and order, and that's where their views start to clash. 
Enki's act of creating humanity, a race meant to serve the gods, sparks a storm within Enlil. As the population of mankind grows, so does the tension between creation and law. Enlil views humanity as a disruptive force, a force that must be controlled. And that brings us to the epic turning point. In the years following the feast, the cosmic balance begins to unravel. Enki's acts of creation, particularly his work with mankind, push Enlil to the edge. Enlil, god of storms and order, decides that humanity must be culled. Enter the epic of Atrahasis, the story where this sibling conflict culminates in a catastrophic event, the Great Flood. Enlil, furious with the noise and chaos humanity has caused, commands that they be wiped out by a flood. But Enki, ever the rebel and the protector of life, cannot stand by. He secretly warns Atrahasis, the chosen man, to build a boat and save humanity from the wrath of Enlil. The flood, a direct consequence of Enlil's anger, becomes a dramatic clash of divine principles. Enki, the god of creation, views humanity as part of the divine plan, something that must be nurtured and preserved. Enlil, on the other hand, sees humanity as a threat to divine order and law. The Epic of Atrahasis serves as a stark reminder of the fragility of balance, how the best laid plans of gods, whether driven by wisdom or law, can lead to cataclysmic consequences when those plans conflict. So what began as a grand celebration in Nibru, a reminder of divine unity, spirals into a cosmic struggle between the forces of creation and destruction. And in the end, it's the very essence of these divine tensions that shape the world, for in their conflict, they reveal how fragile the cosmic balance truly is. As we close the chapter of this cosmic saga, we are left with a powerful reminder about the fragile balance that sustains all things, be it between the gods or within our own lives. The struggle between Enki and Enlil, though wrapped in divine grandeur, speaks to something deeply human. The tension between creation and destruction, freedom and order, chaos and control. Their clash serves as a mirror to the forces that shape our own existence. Forces that, when out of balance, can lead to cataclysmic outcomes.